The current economic crisis is a truly global problem. It started in the West, but its impact is being felt most of all in the developing world. The poorest of the poor have struggled through two years of high food and fuel prices. This second crisis is hitting them while they are down. They have already exhausted any meager savings to buy food. They have already cut back on health and education. And remittances from relatives working abroad have declined as global unemployment rates rise. The result is that now, for the first time, the number of hungry people in the world has topped one billion. Food insecurity in around 30 countries is severe enough to warrant emergency assistance. But development efforts must go beyond coping with today's problems by addressing the challenges of the future. In the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, a country ravaged by years of natural disaster and conflict, levels of food insecurity and poverty are consistently high. When tackling protracted crises, FAO advocates a twin-track approach. This means addressing the need for immediate access to food, as well as increasing food production and promoting rural development. For small-scale farmers, Access to water means access to income. So FAO and the government of Afghanistan are working together to rebuild canals and irrigation systems. This brings better crop yields and guarantees clean drinking water for the local community. This farmer says that one of these streams was completely filled with mud during the floods and the other just doesn't provide enough drinking water for everyone. FAO irrigation projects in Saripul province began in 2005. Since then, almost 2,000 additional hectares of irrigated farming land have been reclaimed, and around 23,000 households are benefiting from the results. Afghanistan's staple crop is wheat and the seed industry has long been recognized as central to the quest for food security. FAO and development partners have always invested heavily in this sector, promoting the production of good quality certified seed for sale to farmers and aid agencies. Special research programs test the qualities and characteristics of different wheat varieties. Work in the laboratory and also on the special research farms, contributes to food security by increasing yields and providing employment opportunities for local men and women. This research farm worker earns about $2 a day for cleaning and collecting wheat grains. It is hard work and the days are long. But, she says, what else can I do? Here in the village of Shirabad, almost everybody depends on animals for food, draft power or income. FAO's model for integrated dairy schemes assists farmers in producing, processing and marketing milk and dairy products. 500 farming families benefit directly from the project, while more than 3,000 families can now buy pasteurized milk. Different provinces face different challenges. But here, in the relatively peaceful province of Mazar in northwestern Afghanistan, improved water supplies, seeds, livestock, and a thriving dairy industry provide safety nets and increase the resilience of this vulnerable population. And women, the driving force for food security all over the world, are actively involved every step of the way.
In Afghanistan and throughout the developing world, sustained investment is the only way to shockproof the agriculture sector against future crises. Many countries are tackling the economic crisis with stimulus packages for industry. Yet in terms of poverty reduction, investment in agriculture has much higher returns. In response to the global economic crisis, trillions of dollars were spent to resuscitate wealthy economies. But now, with almost one-sixth of all humanity suffering from hunger, it is time to bail out the poor.